Hi, so you probably clicked on this video because either you struggle with anxiety or maybe your partner struggles with anxiety or a family member and I want to let you know that I absolutely struggle with anxiety. I unknowingly struggled with anxiety for most of my life and attributed it <laughs> attributed it to stress or moodiness or impatience or that I'm not a people person or just blamed it on a lot of like very unpleasant and kind of unflattering characteristics that I believed that I had when the reality was that I had anxiety. So how did I come to this realization? Honestly, I think when you hit your 30s, we tend to turn the telescope back in towards ourselves. At least that's what happened to me. When you're developing and a teenager, obviously there's a lot of other distractions going on and then in your 20s I felt like I was so focused on what everybody else was thinking and not really what I was thinking and then I hit my 30s and started to ask myself some very big questions because I think you kind of have to because you want to make sure you're on the right path in life because this is kind of the decade where you make some pretty important decisions whether it's like starting a family, what career path you're taking, buying a house, all of the above and so in the last couple of years very recently I've started doing a lot of meditation journaling um, I did a yoga teacher training course a lot of that stuff I've talked about on my channel so far and a lot of that has really helped me become more and more self-aware and by that I just mean that I'm more in tune with my feelings my thoughts my emotions the reasons I do things, my motivations, my triggers, all that good stuff. And so it's really helping me to pinpoint some behavioral stuff or some reactionary stuff that I do that I want to work on. So anger and anxiety. For me, anxiety is, is equivalent to fear. When you think about being anxious about anything, whether it's a social interaction, taking a test at school, um, starting a new relationship, starting a new job, job interview, public speaking, anything, you're fearful of something. I have anxiety about planning this event because I'm afraid that I'm going to fail at it. I'm afraid I'm going to miss something. I'm afraid people are going to realize that I'm an imposter and I actually don't know what I'm doing, etc, etc. So a practice that I've started with myself and my internal dialogue a lot is when I'm feeling anxious about anything and everything, I ask myself, what are you afraid of right now? How does this, how does anger come into the picture? Anger often is a cover up emotion. When we get mad, frustrated, um, we get snippy, we yell at someone, we have an outburst, um, we get in a fight, in an argument, especially with a loved one. It's generally, it's, there's always something going on beneath the surface. There's another layer to that. We are very complicated beings. We're like onions. There's all these layers. So I feel like anger 100% is a very superficial surface emotion. It's a reactionary emotion. And if you go beneath that and you ask a few more questions to yourself or to whomever is angry with you, you will usually discover that that person or yourself is actually feeling sadness, pain, vulnerability, and those are really hard emotions and feelings to work through. And so we often want to avoid that or cover it up by just being mad. So when I made that connection, it has really helped me navigate conflict in a completely different way than I used to. So first let's talk about how this can help you. The old way that I used to respond to a conflict where I felt wrong, threatened, I wasn't being listened to, not validated, I would get mad. And I used to be quite stubborn and really stand on a hill and die on it. Even if partway through that interaction I started to realize maybe I was wrong or there was a miscommunication, I would just stick to being right and the other person being wrong. And I would let my the anger, the, that emotion take over and a lot of times that either caused me to snap at someone, say things I didn't mean, or I would get very closed off. I would run away from the situation. I would either leave, hang up a phone, walk out of the room, maybe the silent treatment. 
And all of that was coming from anger. But then maybe a few hours later, a few days later, I would be able to have some time to process what had happened and often would realize, okay, I reacted that way because I was hurt, because I was afraid of being judged, because I didn't, I was being defensive because it triggered something from another interaction I've had with someone where I felt unsafe. So now, in very recent times, when I get heated in an argument, and let's just say we're talking me and Jeremy, and obviously we've had arguments that's completely normal. You're two different human beings trying to share and compromise on everything in life when you completely have different experiences, backgrounds, perspectives, desires, motivations, all that. So not agreeing on things is normal and arguing about them is also normal. So we've had arguments and what I found is that when I get heated with Jeremy and I'm feeling very um, frustrated and angry, I will literally just ask this question every time in my mind. Now, I'll say, what are you afraid of? A lot of the times we're just afraid of being vulnerable. We're afraid of getting emotional, of crying, of showing what we might think is a weakness, being wrong. One of the arguments, let's just go more, even more specific. Like we had an argument one time about when I was moving in with him and I can't even pinpoint what the argument was really about, which is usually the case. But I know it was when I was moving and I was very, I was feeling very stressed, AKA anxious about the situation because I was giving up my apartment and that meant I was fully committing to him. And I felt very vulnerable about it because I felt like he was able to keep all of his belongings. He already had a place and he kind of had everything set for him. And I felt like I was giving up a lot and it made me feel very vulnerable. So instead of saying that, I started getting very nitpicky about moving stuff and just like the timing of like when we were moving boxes or when I needed help or what I was getting rid of and I was just being very snippy and hard to get along with and be around. And we talked it all out and then I had to ask myself the question, what are you really afraid of right now? You're not mad because you're donating all your crappy Tupperware away and the, a vacuum cleaner that was given to you by something like a lot of the stuff that I had in my possession were given to me for free and I was giving them away as well as passing them along and I was focusing on that as as being something that was unfair and I was frustrated and all this stuff but re the reality was I was feeling very vulnerable about the fact that I was committing to this relationship I was taking a big step I had recently come out of a divorce I was a afraid of this not working and me having to start all over again. And eventually I was able to bring that all up and be honest about what I was feeling. So there's been a few times now where we've gotten in arguments or I've gotten in arguments with family members and I just remind myself to ask the question, if I'm feeling upset, what are you afraid of? I have anxiety, anxiety is fear fear of the unknown, fear that we're not able to control the situation, and fear of being vulnerable. So it's really helped me interact with people that I love and care about in such a different way. Um, instead of, like I said, snapping and saying things I might regret or focusing on things that aren't really issues or really not a big deal, I was able to have more deep, meaningful conversations with them and also with myself. And it's not an easy thing to do and it takes time. And one thing I would really suggest, which I mentioned in another video about journaling, is that when you have a blowout argument with someone or you get angry about something, even if you're angry at like the cable guy or the contractor that showed up late or your boss at work, just write down, start writing down after you've had that blow up, what happened, the event, and what potentially you might be afraid of. Go one step deeper below the anger to the fear and explore that. And it's going to help, when you start putting that into practice, it'll start becoming more instinctual, more of your natural response than the anger. And so this has really helped me now also when people are angry with me. I don't know anyone who can get through life without making a few people mad along the way. It just happens and most of the time it's not within your control. Sometimes we're just in the wrong place at the wrong time. And 
it's helped me take things much less personally because when I see someone angry at me, the first thing I go to is they're hurting. There's pain there. Something else is going on. Sure, people can be mad at you about this, that, and the other thing. We can all make mistakes and do the wrong thing or say something that hurts someone. But if you start looking at angry people as people that are hurting, it can really help navigate the situation or you can take a step back and you can even help them in terms of just saying, you know, I see that you're angry. I want to hear more about what's happening or why. I want you to explain, like I want to listen and actually be there to listen. One thing I have not done well in the past is validate someone else's experience. For a long time, and this links to being very stubborn, I felt that my experience was the truth. That I was an honest person and I observed everything that happened. I have a photographic memory. I often remember conversations word for word and situations. I just remember things very well, or at least I think I do. So when I get into an argument with someone and then they try and tell me their version, I used to be like, no, 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 this is what happened. And that can be a distraction when you start hyper-focusing on who said what and where and when and who's right and who's wrong when that's really never going to solve anything and it's never the root of the issue. And what I realized and learned is that everybody's experience is valid. If someone's feeling like they're not being validated, respected, heard, they have every right to feel that way. And so now I've been really trying to put into practice listening to someone's side of the events, validating that, believing them that that's how they felt, that's what happened, and focusing on communicating what my real intentions were or clarifying what their intentions were and also just believing the best in the other person. This is like the last thing I'll say. A lot of times when I've argued with romantic partners and maybe this will be the same for you, my biggest underlying fear and anxiety was that the relationship wasn't working, that this wasn't the right person for me, that this relationship was failing, that they didn't love me anymore, they wouldn't like me anymore and like all the fear of rejection and that can cause you to really not be your best self when you're trying to have conflict resolution because you're more focused on this anxiety that things aren't working when you should be just focused on listening to this person in front of you and perhaps you can learn and grow together from the experience. So a lot of times when Jeremy and I fight or we have an argument or a miscommunication or anything where we're just not getting along for whatever reason in the moment, we'll remind each other that we're on each other's team. We love each other. We're, we're on the same team. We're not against each other. We are choosing each other to do life with. And we have to trust in that. And trust, you know, the opposite of trusting and having faith is to be fearful and anxious. And I've really started to choose trust and having faith in things rather than being fearful and creating the worst case scenario. And I kind of mentioned that in my video as well about us being evicted and, you know, getting bad news and just believing in the best case scenarios instead of the worst case scenarios. And I think sometimes when we get in arguments with especially our partners, we start to like see them in a different way or we feel like they're attacking us and then they become the enemy and now you're fighting against the enemy when at the end of the day, that's not the case. This person you chose to be with, this person loves you, you love them, and they're not the enemy. And you can trust that you're going to be able to work out the situation. You can trust that they have good intentions. You can trust that no matter what, they're doing their very best. And they want the best for you and themselves. So, I hope this helps. I just wanted to share because I was talking to a friend about this over dinner the other night and just specifically having anxiety when you're in a relationship and how that can kind of take over um, the way you react and respond when you have like conflicts or arguments and things like that because sometimes we don't realize that we're just scared or sometimes we don't want to admit that we're scared and being fearful is normal. The world is a very crazy place. The universe, life, none of it really makes sense. <laughs> so it's okay to be a little lost and not know what's going on and be a little nervous and afraid but when you feel that way the best thing to do is just to be vulnerable and talk about it because vulnerability 
is what connects us. It's what brings us close together. It's what creates these beautiful relationships. The more you're vulnerable with someone, the closer you get to that person. And it's just a beautiful, amazing thing. And obviously if you're guarded and defensive and in attack mode and flight mode, it's really going to inhibit your ability to to get closer to people. So these are this is just the things that I've learned, especially very recently. I've always cared so much about the people I love, but I don't think I've been best able to express it until these last couple of years because I had a hard time being vulnerable myself. So I guess if there's one thing you can take away from this video, it's just to be more vulnerable. And you can practice it by being vulnerable with yourself, like I said, through meditation, through journaling, just through having conversations, you know, with people that you trust and opening up more or maybe trying activities that you feel might open you up more, like try going to a counselor or do some yoga, which obviously I think is amazing, or ask for recommendations for, for books um, or movies or or podcasts that encourage self-exploration and introspection. Anyways, that's all for now. Hope this helps someone out there. Anxiety is real, and I have it every single day of my life, almost over in relationship to almost everything that I do, but I definitely feel like I don't let it control and dictate my life anymore. I see it, it's there, I'm aware of it, but I also just let it keep moving on by and I don't I don't hold on to it and I don't attach to it. I know it's there and I say, no, we're not doing that today. So I hope you can do that too. And that's it for now. I'll see you guys in my next video.